Hey guys, it's Josh Hayhurst here for Future World Champ, and I had somebody ask me a, a while ago to break down a certain kick. Uh, this is the kick. So um, it's part of this form like this. You step forward, turn, jump, and do it kind of like that. Um, so some people call it the tornado kick, butterfly kick, jump, step, jump, reverse, inside. You know, we have nicknames for the kick. So this is a breakdown, okay? So what we'll do is split it into four different parts. Uh, each part is going to help the entire kick get better. So here are the four parts. The first one is, um, let's just kick with the right leg. So we're going to focus on the right leg. Put it in the back, and one of the most important parts of the kick is not a front kick, it's not a crescent kick, it's actually a stretch kick. So what you would do is take your back leg and just bring it up as high as you can and then put it down in the front. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I don't stomp my foot on the ground, I stop it just with the big toe touching, all right? I'll try it back up so you can see a little better. So swing the kick up and come down with just the big toe. You wanna to practice just that, do it as fast as you can. So let's say that we're creating a, a drill. We wanna spend three minutes on the breakdown, okay? So what I would suggest is practice that five times, whether you're good or bad, do it five times and just leave it alone. Okay, so the next part is this. You're gonna take that stretch kick and put it in the front. And instead of doing just swinging it up, I'm gonna do a jump stretch kick. Like no one's ever done that part, you know, as a, as a warm up. So this is the jump stretch kick. You have that leg in the front, you're gonna bring your knee up like this, jump and switch, and do a stretch kick. But you put more energy into it like this. So you're gonna bring that knee up and land with just the big toe. So that's the way you wanna practice that. So let's call it jump stretch kick. I would say pick your favorite leg, put it in the front, do it five times. Okay, the next part is gonna be starting with the kick in the back again. We're gonna step forward and make a T with our feet. Twist around, look at the target, then bring your knee up in the front and then just throw that stretch kick like this. Okay, that was a big edit. So somebody just was looking through the window at the martial arts school, so I had to stop for a second and go talk to them. So okay, let's get back on track. So step one was uh, just a stretch kick. You bring it up, touch your big toe. Step two, put your stretch kick in the front, jump, stretch kick. Part three is the breakdown of the kick, but you wanna make sure that this is the most important part. All right, I'll go through it again. The kick is in the back. You step forward, twist all the way around. Even if you move your feet and you get it all mixed up, that's fine. Bring this knee up in the front, okay? A lot of people bring it up on the side and then they circle it. But we're gonna do this kick a little bit differently and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Twist all the way so your shoulders are almost straight towards whatever the target is. Bring your knee up in the front and then take your back leg and just swing up into a stretch kick, okay? So the breakdown in the, like, the beginning part, you do that slow and then when you do the jump, go ahead and do that fast. So here's how you'll actually perform it. You put your stretch kick in the back, step forward, twist all the way, and then from this weird like twisted up position, knee up, stretch kick, okay? When you land, you don't <clears throat> land it on the ground like that. That is so sloppy. Land it with the kick, barely touching the ground with just your big toe, okay? All right, so let me tell you the secret to this kick. Here's really what it is. Don't throw a crescent kick. Don't throw a front kick. Just throw a stretch kick. This is why. When you do the kick, you're twisting your body. So your entire body is turning like this. All right? So I'll use my arm as an example. I can do this to come across, or I can do this to come across. So I'll actually use my body to move, and my leg just goes up and down. Okay, so I hope I explained it the right way. So here's how it works. You do this, the, the left leg in the front, because the kicking leg's in the back. Take a step, twist, knee up, jump and kick and land sideways with just your big toe landing, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do it um, five times and I'm just gonna practice doing it like smooth. And if I start off smooth, it's kind of slow. And then as I'm smooth and I get better, I start to go a little bit medium fast and I'm still smooth, I try to speed up a little bit, but it's important to always be smooth. You don't wanna be like mechanical, like step, twist, knee, jump. You wanna do it more like just nice and smooth. So here's an example. I'll start off with number one, I'll go up to number five, okay? All right, left leg in the front. 
One, so nice and smooth. Two, I hope you can see from the angle how the kick does a, an arch. Not like a crescent, but more like McDonald's arches, right? So it goes like this. Three. Four, got some height. Five. All right, so a lot of, I was just working with some students on that uh, jump crescent kick today and they were like, man, I told them the, 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 the other secret that I'm about to share with you. And they were like, I was wondering how you made that kick look so good. All right, so for this, I'm gonna have to stop the tape. I'm gonna have to make sure I get it right because the most important part is gonna be the pivot. So I'm gonna adjust the camera real quick and in a second you're gonna be looking like at my feet and just listening for my voice, okay? So hang on just a second. Okay, I think I got the angle right. I hope you can hear me from this far away. What I want you to focus on to really get that, that rotation and that really powerful kick that comes from the hip, you're gonna have to have an air pivot, okay? This is what I call an air pivot. And what it does is it aligns your body in the air. Because when we're on the ground, doing a pivot's fine. Like for example, if I did a good round kick, I would pivot 180 degrees, and I can demonstrate that and show it. But what I'll have to do to do a jump around kick and make it look good, I'll have to jump up and point my toe away in the air. And when I point my toe away in the air, it makes the kick look good. It's like when you start strong, you end strong, okay? So, a lot of people do the kick like this. If you can check out my feet, pay attention down at my feet. I'm gonna twist and I do the kick and a lot of people land like that with their toe facing the target. But what I want you to try to do is keep your eyes on the target and the leg that you land on, try to get it turned at least 90 degrees or maybe even more, okay? So now that I say at least 90 degrees, let's see how far I can get it to land. All right, so from here, step, rotate. Oh, look at that, 92 degrees. That's about the same temperature it was today all day during summer camps. So when you're doing the kick, try to make your kicking leg, you know, go straight up and down, but the leg that you land on, try to make it pivot really good, all right? Now, I'm gonna demonstrate what I don't want you to do when you do this kick, okay? Don't ever do it like this. Like that, boom! My legs are so loud. I landed with a stomp. I want it to be like this, you jump, middle stance, right? And then you go to the next technique, all right? So it's gotta be real smooth. Really quickly, here's the breakdown again. Start off with doing just stretch kicks, just touching the pad of your big toe to the ground and that's it. Then do the number three jump stretch kick. Make that really good. When that's really good, the end result will be really good too. Then practice the slow and smooth breakdown. Just like that. And the last part is start to build up your speed, but focus on the landing and get your base leg turned at least 90 degrees. If you can get it some more and your body's like this, that's awesome. Then go to your stance. All right, let's focus on just doing that kick, make it really strong, and I bet those students that are higher ranks can even apply it to maybe a standing on one leg version where you swing your leg up. You would just cut that technique in half and just do the part where you're bringing your knee up. All right, so good luck, get training. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to say. So last year I wrote this book. I wanted to help all of my students prepare and make their form spectacular. I wanted it to be the best forms ever. But the problem was they, they couldn't afford to do private lessons all the time because they don't have the time and I don't have the time. And they wanted to practice at home. I'm teaching them self-defense, but they want to learn forms. They want to do point sparring. It's just not in the day. So we need a way to be more efficient 
and to really be able to learn how to practice on your own. That's it. So I wrote a book called Become a Forms Master. So what you can do is get an excerpt from the book by going to futureworldchamp.com and signing up for our newsletter, okay? So go do that right away. And if you're interested, I'll send you a link. The Forms Master book is 50 pages but it's like a year's worth of curriculum. And after a few years, you're gonna learn a new form and you can keep using it. And it's good for instructors too because it gives you so many cool drills that you can do uh, for all of your students. It gives you the ammo to use during a private lesson. This is how you start a private lesson. This is how you, st you should start teaching one student their form. This is how you should do it because I know it works. A couple years ago, I started competing, or I started practicing on Monday. I learned my first segment, first technique of my form on Monday. By Friday, following this technique, I felt like I pretty much knew my form. And on Saturday, I got first in forms at the, the local regional tournament. And in our region, they're not pushovers. These guys are really awesome competitors. So I got invited to district championships. I was like, ah, you know, I got invited to it. But then I used the same skills over a week and I really, really focused on doing the things that are in the book. I also had something to prove. I had to prove that the book worked and all the skills worked. And then I became a district champion in 2013. I used the things that's in this uh, Forms Master book to win district championships and all of you guys can too. So go to futureworldchamp.com, get onto our newsletter list, get the Forms Master excerpt, and if you're interested, then you can purchase the book.